Five things you need to know if you are exclusively pumping. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Happy Sunday, I hope everyone's had a lovely week. Today's video is born out of one of the most common questions I get on my Instagram, which is all about pumping. Well, how I'm pumping, tips and tricks for pumping, and which pump to choose between the LV and the Medla. As you guys know, I've had both. I've been trying both for a little while now. I'm gonna talk you through both pumps today, advantages, disadvantages, which one I would choose, and overall, which one I think is the best buy if you're gonna go with just the one. As always, please don't forget to hit subscribe if you wanna see new videos every single Sunday, and please give it a big thumbs up if you enjoy it, because it really helps to support my channel. So without further ado, which I really need to get a new phrase for, because I say it every single time, let's get stuck in to my five things Things you need to know if you are exclusively pumping. Number one, you need to have the right size nipple flange. I think I'm pronouncing that right. That word always reminds me of that Friends episode with Phoebe when she makes up that name. I'm obsessed with Friends. So you need to consider this for both the Meddler and the LV and any single pump that you are going with that has the option to change the nipple flange size. So here are the two examples for the Meddler. You have a 21 millimeter and a 24 and these goes up and up in sizes depending on your nipple size. The idea is you need it narrow enough to stimulate your nipple whilst you are pumping so that the milk is coming out and flowing, but you need it wide enough that the nipple is not getting trapped or blocked when you are pumping because that is going to lead to all sorts of problems. So my one originally came with a 24 millimeter and I had to go and buy separately the 21 millimeter. The same goes for the LV pump, which is a little bit of a bugbear with this pump. So you buy the pump and they give you two sizes. They give you their medium nipple size, which again, I think is 24 and their larger one, but they don't send you the smaller one. So I had to order the smaller nipple flange as a separate order in order to get the right size for my boobs. And you really do need to make sure that you get the right one because it's gonna lead to all sorts of issues and you're not gonna get the maximum milk flowing that you should be doing while you're pumping. Number two, you need to be pumping every two to three hours during the day and every three to four hours during the night. And I know that sounds basic, but I had no idea until a friend told me, and I'm so glad you did because my milk supply was going down and down and down because I was not pumping as frequently as I should be. It's really as simple as supply and demand. So the, the less you pump, the less your body thinks you need milk, therefore the less it's gonna produce for your baby. So you need to make sure you're keeping up that pumping. And I know it may seem brutal during the night. I made this mistake a lot by thinking, nope, my sleep is far more important, I'll just let my boobs sit full. But during the night is actually when you have your highest levels of prolactin, which is related to increased milk supply. So my friend called it the golden hour between like one and 6 a.m. For me, that is when I get most of my milk. I can set up supplies for him for at least until two or 3 p.m. the next day, just through those hours at night. So I try and coordinate it with the times that I get up to make sure I'll if he's okay, Jack will do the shift that I haven't had to get up to pump so that I'm not getting up three times during the night. But I will head downstairs to pump at 1 a.m. and then three to four hours later, I will head down to pump again. I get my best supply then. And again, it just makes sure that your body keeps producing the milk that it needs to produce. And night times is normally a bit of a golden hour. Obviously not for everyone, everyone's a little bit different, but certainly in my experience and a few people that are pumping friends around me have experienced the same. Number three, you need to make sure you are emptying the breast. You can't just pump for 10 minutes, get kind of like 25% of milk and then think job done, that's good, I've got enough for his or hers next feed. You need to actually empty the breast fully. Again, this is related to demand and supply. If the body thinks that you are only needing that 25% of the milk that you're pumping, then it will gradually start to only produce 25% of that milk. So make sure that you are pumping all the way out, emptying the breast. Obviously, you're never gonna be able to fully empty them because the milk is being produced the whole time, but you empty them as much as you can. And that is down to having the correct pump that fits your boobs well and works with this kind of suck and the pumping that your boobs most respond to. Number four, I never did this before, but I've heard it time and time again, and that is you need to actively pump. So you need to massage while you're pumping, not just sit there and, I don't know, look at a computer screen of cars, if that's what you're into. Two things, first of all, people have said that try and be near your baby or try and look at pictures of your baby or think about them in a really cute, lovely way that gets all the oxytocin flowing, because that is gonna help your supply. And then number two, if you massage your breasts 
chest as much as possible while you're pumping, then it's gonna help that flow calm, it's gonna make sure there's no clogged up areas, and you're gonna get your most milk supply. You could always use a little bit of coconut oil. I've seen people use coconut oil around the inside of the flange here, just to help the movement of the nipple inside the shield. Obviously don't put it on the front of the nipple where the milk's coming out. Actively pump is a really good option, and make sure you have some stimulation around you, whether it's near your baby, or with them, or cuddling them, whatever the case may be, whatever is practical at that time. And then my fifth and final tip is to get a hands-free pumping bra. I've linked this before, I'll link it again below. This is the Medela one, but what happens is this little nipple shield just pops in here, like so, and then what you don't need to do is hold to pumps onto your boobs, which is just totally impractical and will make your life very, very difficult. So yeah, this is the boob tube one. You can get ones that have straps and it's also really useful for the LV pump because what's really important they tell you is to make sure your nipple is facing the same direction as the pump. So what you don't want to do is put your nipple in and then let this drag like this because your bra's too loose, because then you're not going to be pumping in the direction that you should be to get the maximum milk supply and make sure your nipples aren't being torn left, right and center. I really nice tight fitting bra like this that will help support any pump in it and help you be hands free is going to be really really useful I've tried this in a kind of normal bra a bra that has quite loose straps or a strap top and it's not practical at all so we'll obviously go through my opinions of the Medela and the LV now but just a little heads up whichever one you go for make sure you get a hands free pumping bra and now for the two pumps which one should you buy which one should you choose which one should you invest in because let's be honest they are both quite a bit of investment. Over here in the red corner, we have the Swing Maxi Double Electric Pump. And then over here in the blue corner, we have the LV Pump. So I'm gonna cover five different areas and then tell you at the end what I think is your best option for pumping. Area number one, we're gonna go with ease of use. Which one is easier to use? I'm gonna have to put that down to the LV. So I'm basing this off how easy it is to clean the pump, how easy it is to put it together, to take off all the parts, to have it charged and to have it plugged in. And the LV beats here time and time again. The simple construction of the LV is one base where you store your milk here and then you have the nipple flange here. These are the two pieces that you would need to wash. And then obviously the electric part is the part that you need to recharge time and time again. One thing to say is that you cannot use the LV pump whilst it's on charge, which I think is a little bit of a missed opportunity. Hopefully they'll bring that out as an upgrade, maybe in their later pumps, only because sometimes you can't always guarantee you're gonna have full battery and it would be really handy to be able to plug into a power supply and use it at the same time. But currently you can't do that. The reason why the LV wins in terms of ease of use is because this is what you have to wash up when it comes to the medulla. Not only has it got more parts, but you also have to take off all these different little layers every time you use it, which turns out to be free, and make sure they're dry each time, which honestly just gets a little bit annoying when you're exclusively pumping. So I would like to get some spare ones of these myself to make life a little bit easier, but certainly in terms of ease of use, in terms of quickness, I'm gonna say the LV wins. Probably the biggest area of any pump that we want to know about is the effectiveness of that pump. How much milk is it getting out? Is it getting out as much as it should? And I'm just going to throw it out here as well to say that all of our boobs are different, all of our nipples are different, all of the way that our boobs release milk are different. So what I say isn't necessarily going to be right for you. I'm just trying to advise on what has worked best for me and hopefully it might be able to shed some light and help a little bit. For me, in terms of effectiveness, this is the winner. And the reason is I just feel like it's far more of a workhorse. If I compare the amount of milk that I get out of this one, every time I use it compared to the amount of milk I get out of the LV, I'm sorry, but the Medela does win. If I take my most effective pump time, which is let's say a 5 a.m. pump, from this one, I might get up to 150 mil, and from the LV, it's always gonna kind of max out around 100 tops, tops, tops. Both pumps have the two-phase expression, which is when they do the very, very quick pumping to kind of stimulate the breast and stimulate the milk supply and then it goes for the deeper suction which is a more effective suck but time and time again I do get more milk from this. My answer to this one is if you are exclusively pumping and you need a large amount of milk for your baby because you are feeding them purely off breast milk then the medulla wins here. Cost, okay cost is a big factor right? These are expensive little things to have. LV unfortunately is substantially more. Now bear in mind this is only for one boob so in order to get the same as here you can 
gonna have to spend around double and that is quite a bit more. So for the cost section, we are over to the red team. I think this is the red team. We go to the meddler as being the winner there. Battery power. Now, this is my biggest bug there with this. I bought this meddler because it was the hands-free pump. You can use it with your batteries, which slot into the back here. It takes a whopping six batteries, but hey, I was thinking that's fine as long as, as long as it does the job, but it doesn't do the job. I only use this pump when it is plugged into the mains because this is the level of suction that I get if it's just battery. And in fairness, maybe that has had one or two sessions with those batteries, but I feel like it has totally rinsed the power from them and you just get zero milk when you're running off the batteries unless maybe they're fresh from like one or two times. Yeah, battery power, I'm sorry, I really wish the meddler would improve. I know this isn't their latest range, so maybe their latest range is much better with the battery, but the LV, it's, it's not much better. It says online that it has a maximum two and a half hour pump life, but in my experience, I've managed to get about half an hour, maximum 45 minutes, maybe 60 minutes out of battery life. And yesterday when I was running around, I was out all day from 9.30 until 5.30 p.m. And this is what I brought with me. It was super frustrating when after one pump session during the day, it then ran out. And in, as a result, my boobs are now really sore today. I think I've got some clogged upness because I wasn't able to express what I wanted to. And I, that was just very, very frustrating. So I think for a pump that is designed to be you know, super practical, on the go. It's a shame the battery life isn't a little bit more durable in this, but the meddler isn't much better. So if I have to pick, I'd probably give them both across on that. But the fact that this has the option to plug into the main supply mean that this is probably gonna win because you've at least got a guaranteed way to get full power all the time. So yeah, battery is just, it's just not great on either. Practicality, okay, practicality of the both pumps. Let's be honest, this is amazing. This is amazing when it comes to practicalness and the fact that I could be out and about yesterday whilst the battery wasn't quite there, you can pack the USB charger and put it in your car. I was able to be out all day and not have to find a shop or plug in all of this stuff and sit here like this. I could just pop it in my bra whilst I was driving with a tight bra and it was pumping away. And for that, this is the best invention ever. It is silent. No one can really tell that it's on except from perhaps one boob is bigger than the other. Obviously, I don't have two, as you'll notice. I only had the one to start with before I made the investment into the two. So if you were gonna be pumping a lot with this, then you would obviously need to buy the two LVs. If you were using a pump as just an option to have every now and then, an option to have when you're out with friends at lunch and may not be able to make it home for six hours, then one will probably do you because you can just swap one boob to the other. Practicality wise, this is, this is the dream. So what's the verdict? Which pump would I go for if I was only buying one? Don't get me wrong, they both have their advantages and disadvantages, so in the dream world, we'd be able to buy all the pumps under the sun, but obviously budget-wise, that is not a practical solution. So here is my answer. If you are gonna be exclusively pumping like me, then I've gotta say the Medela is the better option. It's more of a workhorse, you can get a lot more milk from it, it means your pumping sessions are shorter. And yes, you are kind of restricted to somewhere that has a main supply, in my opinion, because I don't think the battery power itself is great. But if you're planning to be at home, if you're not going back to work super early, then this is great because I just have it plugged in at one place in my home. And I know 95% of the time, I'm gonna be able to make it back to pump every two to three hours during the day. On the other hand, if you are going back to work super early, so you need something on the go, or more importantly, you're not gonna be exclusively pumping and you just want to have an easy option that is there for the odd time you're pumping, then definitely get the LB. This is a very, very practical pump. It's very easy to use. Yes, it's not gonna give you you know, tons and tons and tons of milk in my personal experience, but it is a super handy gadget, I would almost say. Like this is really more on the techie side. So if I had to pick one, for me, it would be the Mandela, purely because I am exclusively pumping right now. I do work from home, so I have that flexibility. I don't really mind if something's noisy because this is noisy. So yeah, this would be my personal choice for my current situation. I hope that helps a little bit shed some light on what might be good for you. 
But if you have any questions, obviously, please feel free to comment below. I would love to hear from you. Happy to answer anything you might have, which will enable me to help. But um, I just think it goes without saying there is no right or wrong when it comes to you, the way you choose to feed your baby. Right now, I'm finding exclusively pumping the easiest way for me. I love being able to track how much Alfie has in terms of his milk and it makes the feeding session shorter. And yes, it has its impracticalities, but it's just what's working well for us. I hope that was useful. I will see you guys next Sunday for another video and I know I mentioned it last week but I do have an exciting new series which I'm going to be launching in the next few weeks and it's not necessarily to do with motherhood more to do with design interior design I don't know if you can guess but yeah I'm really really excited about that so more to come but I shall see you next Sunday don't forget to hit subscribe and I shall see you then bye